But we will move on, and now it's Tom Lee, who's been taking a sabbatical lately, playing very tight. He folds this hand. And over to Andy, he's out as well. Under the 25-year-old from Huntington Beach, California, Tom Brabant. He's got the four or five of diamonds, the suited connectors. Just got lucky and won a pot a minute ago. Yeah, Tom's a sneaky player. Likes to play a lot of different hands. Very creative player. And this time, proving that again, he's going to raise it to 100,000. Now, Mr. Brooklyn, Jared Jaffe. Jared's got a decent queen jack here. He's considering this. Yeah. Former collegiate baseball player raises with the 5-4. But remember, Vince, these other players saw him try to steal a pot a minute ago with a jack-9 offsuit. They know the jig is up for this guy stealing all these pots. And Jared's going to make the call with the queen jack. And Kyle Wilson with just 9-7 also going to make the call. Yeah. Three-way action. Feels like he's getting priced in. So 60% of the field playing this pot. Going to the flop. Who will be lucky? Oh. All three players have flopped a pair. Jared has flopped top pair. He's going to check. Yep. Kyle's flopped middle pair. He also checks. And now a continuation bet. Nope. Broadband also checking. To the turn we go. Oh, and a seven comes off. Oh, no. How many times a night at this table have we seen the slot machine come up? Three sevens. For the Canadian. Now he's been checked into now how to play a three of a kind. What a card for him. And he's going to bet right out with him, Vince. Yeah, it looks like 200,000. Now, Tom's saying to himself, hmm, this guy really got something or he's just making a stab at this pot because we didn't bet on the flop. Well, Tom is going to give a little something here to it with just a pair of fours, 200 grand. Well, he's going to make the call. And now Jared's got a tough decision. Remember, nobody bet the flop. Now, all of a sudden, it's been bet and called on the turn. I think you get away from this hand, even if you got the best hand here. Oh, no, he's going to do the opposite. He's shoved. Well, Jared doesn't Shove think that, so. Please. He has shoved his stack in over the top. Now Kyle's thinking to himself, OK, do I re-raise this guy behind me? How to play this properly? Well, what he's thinking about is, does this guy have me beat? You can't lay down three sevens, though. Not with a small stack like this. Well, you still got a man behind you. Remember that. Cool. But Kyle is going to make the call. And Tom Broadband goes away. I have a seven, right? I have a seven. What a disaster here for the two-day lawyer. <sighs> Good game. Well, the two-day lawyer's got two outs here. Must catch a jack on the river to win this pot. Otherwise, he's going to be out in fifth place, and it'll be case closed for the lawyer. Kyle, as you can see, not jumping for joy until that river card hits the board. All he's got to do is dodge a jack to win this pot. Here comes the river. Well, it's a king. So that's going to do it for the two-day lawyer, Jared Jaffe. On Harry. So Harry calls the hand. Tyler out. Now Mike with an option. No, he doesn't raise. So we're going to see a flop. And the flop is a king, queen, five kings for Mike. They both check. Oh, and a 10 comes off. Harry has made a straight. Now there could be some serious action going on right now, Vince. There's the bet by Mike. 400,000 after slow playing his kings. He now has an open and straight draw to go with him. If Harry raises here, he can win a monster pot. Vince, he just calls. I can't believe he doesn't raise with two flush draws out there. Going down to the river. Let's see if it'll oh, Now the ten of spade comes off. About the worst card Harry could see. Possible flush, possible full house out there now. But he still has got a straight. Well, Mike has checked, and Harry is going to bet. Well, he just bet 375000 How much? This is the bet that I'm guessing is going to get paid off. Cool. And Mike does pay him off. Yep. But I can't believe that Harry wouldn't raise that on the turn. Think of the size pot he might have won, Vince. Could have been much bigger than this. Finally, you hit your draw, huh? <laughs> hit a gut shot. I can't hit open-handed with a flush draw. I told you, when you have less outs, when you have a lot of outs, you're not going to get it. When you have less outs, you hit it. He's looking to take down his first WPT title tonight, as are the other three players.
Just and we move on quick fold by Pat Lyons. If you want me to give you a chip count, I no, can no. give you a chip And now count. our short stack, I Benjamin. Can, I can guesstimate myself. Will not gamble with this one. Goes out. Todd Peterson now with King Seven. And he has just called Pesh now. Looks down as a queen nine. And so I'm certain Todd just called in the small blind here with this hand because he's been pummeled by this guy. It's Every right. Every time he raises, he gets re-raised. Here he was going to call the raise, but he just didn't want to go for three bets, so he limped in. And the flop is a jack-jack ten. And with two hearts. Pesh with an open-ended straight draw. Todd just slowing down, not giving any action. Checks it. Well, Pesh is going to bet the draw. It's a hundred thousand, and Todd going to make this call. A little surprised by this. He just wants a little revenge against Pesh, hoping to get lucky. It's a king. He gets lucky, but not really because Pesh hits the straight. It's a nightmare card for him, man. It certainly is. Todd checks it. It's the best card Todd could catch, the best card Pesh could catch, and that's bad news for Todd. Coolly going to bet three thirty-five. Todd with the insta call, thinking he's in front. Little does he know. That's when you call a bet on the flop and hit a king, you're not going out here. Oh, river card, Todd could fill up though. Nope, five of clubs. Well, Todd checks again. About 1.1 million in the pot. Pesh getting out nearly a pot size bet. Yeah, he's going for the juggler. Just about a million. Call. Oh, insta call by Todd. Well, he is not going to like it when he sees Pesh's hand here, but yeah, that's what happens. That? Well, that is a devastating blow there for Todd Peterson. Pesh just taking advantage, the crowd loving it. Going up to 8 and 16. Back to this hand, Allen this time with an ace 8, and he is calling it. Rushing out, Pat Mahoney ejects his hand, but Leaf Force. Well, Leaf's got the 6-5 of diamonds, the suited connectors you like to see flops with. Shannon checks. He's in the big blind. Well, the flop comes up. Eight, eight, seven. Three of a kind for Alan Carter. Shannon Shaw with sevens. And Lee Force with an open ended straight draw. Well, action's on Leaf. He checks. Shannon checks right behind him. Well, Alan's bet 50,000. This hand was not raised before the flop. And it may work out well for Alan. Leaf with a call. Shannon get one away. Here comes the turn. Good fool by Shannon. Nine of hearts on the turn. Lee Force has made it straight. He checks. Alan Carter gonna bet 150,000. Now well, Leaf looks like he's agonizing here. He caught the dream card. His opponent's got a full house. You're just broke here. But certainly, you're gonna have to play the straight. All right. He now goes all in. Allen's turned to Wentz now. Is this the best Maybe. acting job ever? Or is this? Because I got eight. Vince, obviously pot committed only another 271,000. I call, I call. Over 700,000 in the pot, so he does make the call. Yeah, lead force out in front. This could be his last hand he plays here at Beau Rivage if things turn ugly on the river. No funny stuff. <laughs> no funny business. Third of the deck, man. Well, if the board should pair, Alan Carter will have knocked out Leaf Force. Well, he can catch an ace and win it as well. Yes. Doesn't happen as a six comes off. So Leaf Force has doubled up here. Leaf got in this tournament on a $500 satellite. What a parlay this guy could make. That's how you use the force right there.